It's always been impossible or very difficult to count how many distinct values there are in a column. For example, here, there are three types of job, even though there are four lawyers, two farmers, three doctors, etc. Here, there are four different countries listed. And it's always been easy to do a count of rows or even a count if, but to say how many distinct values there are has been impossible. Until now, because now you can write equals distinct count, and I can select these, close my brackets, and then I have three, and I can just drag this across and get four. Now that's really cool, and there's all sorts of other cool stuff that you can do as well, because this is not a function that exists in the standard Excel, but what does exist in the standard Excel is the opportunity to make your own functions or to reuse other people's functions. In this video, I'm going to go through that, how to use the Lambda function, which just got released. And I'm really excited about the capabilities of that, plus how to use the advanced formula environment to edit your Lambdas, and also how to get other people's Lambdas. And if you just want my Lambdas to reuse in your own workbooks, then just drop me a comment and subscribe to my channel and then I will let you know how you can get it. I'll be happy to share these with you. My name is David Benheim, and I have lots of videos on my channel about Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on that stuff, and I love showcasing the new. Now, the other thing that I built was some other functions, for example, a distinct count if. Now, it's very clear that there are for lawyers, but how many countries with lawyers? Just one, two, and three. And this formula is able to return that. And this is another one. Well, list out those countries. Rather than just telling me there are three countries, list them out. Um, now, you could always do a count if, but not a distinct count if. You could, through combinations, do a text join if, but I just made that into its own function that also removes duplicate values. So here we have duplicates, but I've removed those in the function that I built. Chris Gross from the Excel development team has created, along with the release of this feature, some cool ones. So some exist like count words. So how many words are there in a cell? Here they are delimited, but they don't have to be, just how many spaces leads to how many words. Or you could even have equals reverse text text reverse, and I can say this one, reverse looks like this. <laughs> now, if I go to a new workbook, so file and then blank workbook, and then I write equals distinct, it doesn't actually exist because these are not available in the standard Excel, but they are available once you add them, unless you put them in your template file, and then you can get them in all of your workbooks, as I'll show you in a bit. So let's just um, paste in that thing and let's build them ourselves. So here I've pasted in the data from the other one. Now we're going to get the advanced formula environment. To do that, go to insert and then get add-ins. And then here, and then here we're going to search for the advanced formula, advanced formula environment, that's what it's called. So click add, continue. Now by default, it adds it here. I personally don't like that. It takes up a lot of real estate, like puts my conditional formatting stacked on top of these, squishes the other stuff. And if you're on a smaller computer than I have, then it will squish things even more. So I prefer to right click and customize the ribbon. And then I'm just going to drag this into formulas, just after calculation. There's plenty of room in formulas tab so it's good to have it there. Or the other thing you can do is you can right click it and add to quick access toolbar. So you can get it over here on your quick access toolbar just by launching it there. If you don't see the quick access toolbar, just right click anywhere on the ribbon and choose show quick access toolbar. It's recently become an option to hide it, but I always have it revealed because lots of my speed up tricks are there. So that brings you to the advanced formula environment. Now there's a few things that you can do. Um, you can mass import some stuff. Now over here, we have the blog post that has been written by Chris Gross with all this new stuff that's been released, including the advanced formula environment that I'll go through and a GIF of how to edit that. If I scroll down, even a chessboard one, then I'll get to this one. So aka.ms, this is essentially a pre-made one. So I'm gonna click on that. And then here I'm going to copy this URL. I'm going to go back to Excel. So I'm in Excel, Advanced Formula Environment, open that up, and I can click on this drop down and from URL, then I can paste it there. 
I can press import. I can add it to a namespace, kind of like a workspace if I want to. I'm just going to add it as standard. Then I have all of these. So once it's done with that, you do need to click this button that syncs it with the name manager. So click on there. And if I go in my formulas tab to the name manager, I can see all of these are here. And now in theory, I can use all the ones that are in there. So the one that I showed you is equals text reverse. And that will be this one. Notice that it does give you the tooltip like that, which is really useful. And it will give you that one. And if there's some other more advanced ones like append rows or append columns, it can give you multiple things here uh, to allow you to do it. You can even have optional parameters with square brackets. So here is a list of all the ones that you get. Count words I showed you. Um, stack or append columns and append rows is also something that I like. Um, choose random, can choose a random thing from a data set. Um, let's see how we can just copy one that I wrote as well and then write one ourselves from scratch. So over here in the workbook I showed you earlier, if I go to the formulas and name manager, then I have here the ones that I built, which is distinct count and distinct count if and then text join if. So I can take this text join if, and I can just sort of copy that, close, and over here I could either paste it directly into the name manager, or I can paste it into the editor. So you have the manager and the editor here. Um, I'm actually going to do the editor. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the list. So if I wanted to, I could press a new and, and do a new workspace. So here I'm going to say, just paste it there. So it needs to first say the, the name of the function. So I'm going to say this is text join if, and then equals lambda like that. You can do it on multiple rows, but once it's here, I can then again sync, and then it will add it here, equals text join if, and here are my parameters. So next let's create our own one. So I'm going to scroll to the end. By the way, it probably helps if you resize it like that to the maximum. So you don't have this horizontal scroll bar. So you need to do a semicolon to go to the next one. Press enter, uh, backspace till the end. It doesn't matter how many spaces you do. You can even put in some comments um, by doing sort of this symbol before and afterwards. Green means it's a comment. So here I'm going to write distinct count. And I'm going to say equals. Lambda, I can press tab to lock it in, but then I do have to open a bracket, which you don't have to do in the regular Excel. Blue means it's function name. And with Lambda, your first input, your first however many inputs are the arguments or the parameters that the user has to type in. And then if you keep pressing a comma, you get to um, what the function actually does. If I do it in here, equals Lambda, it says creates a function value, which can be called within formulas. Press tab to lock that in. And then I have parameter or calculation, comma parameter or calculation, and keep going. Essentially, you can have as many inputs as you want. Optional ones would be in square brackets, like you would do in the regular Excel, um, and then not in square brackets if they're mandatory. So equals lambda, and then here I'm going to do uh, array. That's going to be the input. I'm not going to do the autocomplete because this is a parameter. Press a comma. And then I'm going to go into the regular formula, what the formula does. And then what the formula does is a count A, count A, open brackets of unique. Unique is a great function that just got released with Office 365. And then my array is just going to be what I'm doing. And notice that this symbol means this is a parameter that I've pre-built. So I'm not going to do the other two inputs of the unique function. Notice they're in square brackets, so they're optional. So I just need to close my brackets however many times I open them, which in this case, it looks fine like that. So that is my function here. And just to show you what we do, equals unique in the regular Excel grid of these would just give me those functions. And then if I wrap it around with count a, tab, and close brackets at the end, that would be four. So now I just need to get the name distinct count to be recognized by Excel. And to do that, I can click this that says sync. Now, sometimes it doesn't work. If you see the red underline, it doesn't work because this means that I haven't separated it yet. Um, if I add in an extra bracket, for example, that will not work. 
Uh, if it doesn't work, then when you click this, it will tell you there is an error. But if I remove the errors, remove the underlined red ones, then this one will give me the tick. That means it has synced. And just to prove it, I can go to name manager and I can see now this thing count is now synced. So now I could do the function this way, or I could just do equals distinct count. And then the array is just going to be this one. Now, the other ones that I did, the text join if, for example, here there's a lot more parameters. So I have the delimiter, comma, text join array. Notice how if you highlight one, it selects the other one. Criteria array and criteria. So I actually have four here, and I tell it in the then calculation what to do and when to refer to those. Now just to show you how it might look if you're not using the advanced formula environment, so if I go to this workbook and the name manager, let's say that I want to bring in this thing count if. So I'm just going to take this and copy it, close, and I'm going to go back to my existing workbook over here. Now I can go to the formulas tab and name manager and I can do new. I could say here, I'm going to paste that. It has to start with equals lambda. And here I'm going to do it distinct count if, like that. Press OK and close there. And now I can also do equals distinct count to distinct count if. And just to show you these in action, if I do equals distinct count if, you can have the range is going to be the countries because I'm counting countries. F4 to lock that in, comma, the job, F4 again, and then the criteria is going to be that one. Close my brackets and I get two for doctor, one, two. That makes sense. Let's do equals text join if, and let's say the delimiter is going to be a semicolon. Always wrap in speech marks. Keep an eye on this. This is your tooltip. You can move it around if you need to. Really helpful for these kind of longer ones with lots of inputs. Text join array is going to be the countries again, because I want the countries listed, F4. Criteria range is going to be the job, F4, comma, and the criteria is going to be this. Close my brackets and I get Portugal, UK. Notice that it has removed the duplicates. I can drag that down like that and it works. And if there is something, nothing, it does give you the correct zeros. I first did it didn't, so I had to redo. Um, the number of countries one. <laughs> Again, if you want this, then leave a comment and I can send you these lambdas so you can reuse them as you need to for this workbook. Now, if you want to do it from scratch, I can paste that in there. It gives you the calc error when it has lambda like this, but you could test it by just sort of taking this one and then replacing the criteria and the criteria range with something that you see. And you could also uh, then need to add the lambda around it to say that the range is there, the range is also here, criteria range is here and here and here, um, and then criteria is elsewhere as well. So uh, it is useful to do, um, I, pref I much prefer it with the advanced formula environment. So other things that you can do with this is, this is a sync one I showed you, this is to import, but you can get importing from here as well, from URL, from text. You can also create a new workspace, kind of like folders, if you want to keep them organized. You can give feedback or change a couple of settings and reload it or look at the debugger here. And then here in the manager, it is a little bit different. This is like a search or a filter. Um, you can add new ones like this. And this is a dialog box with the formula name and what it refers to, i.e. the formula. Um, this is not as nice an editor as in the editor as the name suggests. <laughs> but then once you've got it here, it might be easier to manipulate it. For example, you can rename it, you can edit it like that. This is just in the renaming field. And this is to delete it. This is to share it. And then you can just copy and paste that and import from text elsewhere. Version wise, it depends which one you have. At the time of making this video, if I go to file an account, you do need to be on Microsoft 365 apps for, apps for Business, Apps for Enterprise, or Office 365. It says something similar like that. And in About Excel, it should say 2202 for it to be available. So if you are in the beta channel like me, then it's been out for a while. If you see here that it says current channel, then you should be able to get it right now. Or if you see that it says semi-annual channel, 
then it will come to you in six months because it is about six months delay. So in August 2022, you should be able to get it. This means 2022 month 03. So um, I'm in the beta channel, so I got the preview month because we're currently in February at the time of this video. But you should see 2202 if you're in the monthly channel as well. There were other new functions that were released as well as Lambda. They're called the Lambda helper functions. So let's look at the blog post about that. I will link to both blog posts and this description. So here it is. This is a blog post. You have map, reduce, scan, make, array, by row, by call, and is omitted. I won't go through these in detail in this video because they are quite advanced. Um, personally, I have only used them a little bit so far. There is also called a concept known as recursive lambdas, which allows you to kind of create loops. So it goes through the function and does one thing, then goes through the function again, and if that thing applies, then does that thing. Um, something that was previously done with VBA, but again, more advanced I'm gonna go through in this video. Uh, but lastly, I'm gonna show you how to get it set up in any new file. So if I press Control N on my keyboard for new file, I have here equals text join if. I have here text reverse. I have all the ones that are generally added to them. So um, in order to do that, you need to change your default template. So uh, you first need to navigate to where your default template is. So let's look at my file explorer. Now, if I go to C drive, then I'm just going to navigate to it quite fast, users and then DA Ben. Notice DA Ben is DA Ben I'm, which is me. This is the one that's most likely to be different for you, depending on uh, your contact information. Then I'm going to go to app data and roaming, then M for Microsoft, then Excel, Excel starts. And then you should be able to see this. So personal, this is where your macros are saved and book.xltx. You might not see it, you might see other stuff, but generally you should see something like that. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go back to the one where I built the lambdas. So over here, this is the one with my lambdas. I can go to the name manager and see all of them there. Then I'm going to delete everything. So I'm going to go to uh, home tab and clear all. I just want to have a blank workbook and click there. Then I'm going to go to file and then save as, and I'm going to choose to save as a template and click on this. I don't want the default location for my template. I want to paste the one that I got earlier. And then you do want to save it on top of the existing one. So press save. Do you want to replace it? Press yes. And then here it is, book Excel TX, T is the template file. And just to prove it, I can go to the formulas tab and name manager and they're all here. And I found that you need to close it, otherwise you won't get it working. And then once you've done that, control N for a new file equals text join, text reverse, they're both there. However, if you go to file and blank workbook, they are not here. So if you do control N, it works. If you go to file and blank workbook, it doesn't work. It also is not built into any workbooks that someone else has sent to you or shared with you and made on their own unless they have the lambdas there to start. All right, so I hope you liked this video. If you did, my name was David Benaim and I have weekly videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zooms, Visio. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering on my channel, especially the new stuff, which I really love. Thanks for watching.